In section two of the waves topic, let's talk a little bit about the qualitative properties of both transverse and longitudinal waves. How can we identify the wavelength, the frequency, the amplitude, and the period of a wave? Let's start with the wavelength for both a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. So we'll draw a transverse wave. I'm going to draw it kind of carefully, one wavelength or one cycle at a time, so that I can draw my longitudinal wave with the same number of cycles. From here to here is one wavelength or one cycle. So this would be one, two, three wavelengths, or three cycles. Now let's draw our longitudinal wave the same. Let's have the crest of the transverse wave correspond to the compression of the longitudinal wave. So the longitudinal wave is pressed together here, and it's more spread out here. And he's pressed together here, and more spread out here. And pressed together here, and more spread out here. So both our transverse wave and our longitudinal wave have approximately three wavelengths. And so here's the crest corresponding to the compression. Here's the trough corresponding to the rare faction. So you see, a transverse wave has alternating crest, trough, crest, trough, crest, trough. The longitudinal wave has alternating compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. So I've drawn these two waves so that their wavelengths will be approximately the same. The wavelength, and you can copy this down, the definition of a wavelength. Wavelength, one wavelength is the distance between two points which are in phase to each other on adjacent wave cycles. The wavelength is the distance between two points which are in phase to each other on adjacent wave cycles. Essentially, that means crest to crest. We'll simplify the definition for now. Crest to crest would be one wavelength. With a longitudinal wave, compression to compression would be one wavelength. So again, we've drawn a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave with approximately the same wavelength. Crest to crest or compression to compression. Now you see that trough to trough would also give you the wavelength. And this would be the same wavelength as this. And here, rarefaction, the part where it's spread out, rarefaction to rarefaction would also give you the wavelength of the sound wave. In a later section, I'll show you some more sophisticated ways to recognize the wavelength of a transverse wave. But for now, 
crest to crest or trough to trough is fine. And for the longitudinal wave, compression to compression or rarefaction to rarefaction would be defined as one wavelength. Now let's look at the amplitude for the transverse waves. It would be very rare for anyone to ever ask you to measure or locate the amplitude of a longitudinal wave. We will only deal with the amplitude of a transverse wave. So, for a transverse wave, okay, this point down the center of the wave, right here, is called the equilibrium point. This would be considered zero or the equilibrium position. Now, a definition for amplitude would be as follows. You can copy this down. I'll read it slowly. Amplitude is the distance between the equilibrium point of a wave and any point of maximum displacement. So, the distance between the equilibrium here and a point of maximum displacement such as the crest, that would be the amplitude of the wave. The distance between equilibrium and the trough would also be the amplitude. Don't accidentally make the mistake of stating that the amplitude stretches the entire height from crest to trough. That is not the amplitude. That is double the amplitude. That's wrong. Let's get rid of that. Right, either this or this would be considered the amplitude of the wave. How about frequency? Let me show you a picture so that you can understand what frequency means. I'm going to draw a wave with a certain frequency and then I will draw a second wave with double the frequency of the first wave. So here's my first wave, crest, trough, that's one wavelength or one cycle, crest, trough, another wavelength, another cycle, crest, trough. So I've drawn a wave and I've drawn three of its cycles or three wavelengths. Now I'm going to draw a wave with double the frequency of this original wave. Now let's make sure we do this correctly. So from here to here, I'm going to need to make one wavelength. It's from here to here, I'm going to have to have two wavelengths. So we go up and down. Right, and up and down. So in the same distance, in the same horizontal distance, that this wave had one wavelength, this wavelength has one, two. It has half the wavelength of this one. So let's just finish that, finish that thought. We've got that and that, and for this one here, my drawing is off a little bit, but we'll get the point. All right? So, let's just say that this wavelength here, now I'll draw the wavelength from here to here, right, that's one wavelength, let's say that that's two meters. 
For example, 2 meters. That means that the wavelength of this wave is only 1 meter. Crest trough is one wavelength. A crest and a trough is one wavelength. Crest to crest is one wavelength. So here, right, that's also one wavelength. It includes one crest and one trough. Just another way to show the wavelength. So the wavelength here is two meters. The wavelength here, crest trough, is only one meter. Now, we're going to assume that these two waves are traveling at the same speed. That means that this distance will get past my finger in a certain amount of time. Let's say, let's say one second. Let's say that this distance, two meters, will get past my finger in one second. So that means that for this wave, these two cycles will get past my finger in that same one second. Let's define frequency now. Frequency. You can write this down. Frequency is the number of cycles per second. Frequency is the number of cycles per second. For this wave, we said that one cycle from here to here will go by my finger in one second. So the frequency here would be one, frequency would be one cycle per second. If the same distance goes by, in one second, for this wave, that would be one, two cycles. So, the frequency of this wave down here is two cycles per second. Now, what you notice is that this wave has a longer wavelength and a smaller frequency, this wave has a smaller wavelength and a larger frequency. So you notice that when the wavelength is halved, the frequency must double. And you see that wavelength and frequency are inversely related. And again, the frequency is the number of cycles to pass per second. So if these are both traveling at the same speed, then this much passes in one second. That's one cycle per second. If this one is traveling at the sp same speed, this much passes in one second. That's one, two cycles passing in one second. So we see what frequency is. Let me ask you a few little questions. We'll call this wave A and we'll call this wave B. Which wave has the greater frequency? Correct. Wave B has the greater frequency. Which wave has the greater wavelength? Correct. Wave A has the greater wavelength. I hope you have a qualitative idea of the difference between wavelength and frequency. I've tried to use numbers as sparingly as possible in this discussion. The one last thing that we need to talk about is the period, the period of a wave. You can write down the definition for period now. The period of a wave, the period of a wave is 
the amount of time required to complete one cycle. The amount of time required to complete one cycle. I'd like to draw another diagram, kind of like a graph, and put some numbers on it so that you can tell me the period of the wave that I've drawn. Now remember, one cycle would be from here to here. Right? Or, for this wave, from here to here. That would be one cycle. All right? So let's draw a different diagram. And see if we can figure out the period for the wave that we've drawn. So here's a graph. And on the x-axis, I will put, well, let's start by putting time. I'll put time in seconds. Right, and we'll mark it off nice and even. And we'll make this, oh, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, etc. All right, let's draw a wave, and you can tell me what the period of this wave is. Keeping in mind that the period of the wave is the amount of time to complete one cycle. So what's the period of this wave, this wave that we've drawn? How much time does it take to complete one cycle or one wavelength? From here to here is one cycle, and that takes four seconds. So the period of this wave is four seconds. What if I were to draw a wave with a shorter period? Let's draw a wave with a period of only one second. So that means that a whole cycle must land right there at one if I start at zero. I'm going to give him a larger amplitude also so that you can clearly see the second wave that I'm drawing. And up, down, and he lands right there. Crest trough is one cycle and one cycle takes exactly one second. So here's a wave with a much smaller period than the first wave that we drew. And I can finish him all the way to the end. Again, my drawing is getting a little off, but you get the idea. Alright? Okay? So each cycle takes exactly one second. That's a wave with a smaller period than the first wave that I drew. Now, perhaps you also noticed that when my period got smaller, my frequency got larger. Again, that's assuming that both of these waves are traveling at the same speed. If they're on the same graph together, it's a good bet that they are also probably traveling at the same speed. But again, when my period got smaller, my frequency got larger. So I hope you understand that period and frequency are also inversely related. Now, let's draw one more graph and put two different waves on it and see if we can't sort of review how we can look at the diagram and make qualitative decisions about the wavelength, the amplitude, the frequency, and the period of each wave. 
So here we go. And I'm not going to put any numbers. We'll put numbers in the next section. This section is supposed to stay qualitative, so I'm going to try to stay away from numbers as much as possible in this section. All right, so let's make just some little hash marks. Try to make them even. All right. Okay, so here's, here's my first wave. And we'll call this wave A. And here's my second wave. Okay. Oops. Let's make sure we hit that one, two, three. You want to hit that right there? Here's my second wave. Oops, missed a little bit. That's okay. No problem. And we'll call my second wave B. All right. And what I'd like to know is which wave has the greater wavelength, which wave has the greater frequency, which wave has the greater amplitude? We use a capital A for that. And which wave has the greater period? And the symbol for period is capital T. I take a moment to think about this. Which wave has the greater wavelength? Which wave has the greater frequency? Which wave has the greater amplitude? And which wave has the greater period? That's assuming that they're both traveling at the same speed. So what have you decided? What have you decided about the wavelength? The distance covered by one cycle. Well, for B, one wavelength would be from here all the way over to here. A wavelength would include one crest and one trough. It's also the distance from crest to crest, but here we are, from one crest and one trough, or crest to crest, one wavelength is very long on this one. One wavelength for wave A is very short. There's one wavelength for wave A. So it's wave B that has the greater wavelength. B is greater. All right? Now, the frequency. If they're both traveling at the same speed, which one will have more cycles pass my finger in one second? I can put my finger anywhere. It doesn't matter. Do you see which one will have more cycles past my finger in one second? Only one cycle will pass my finger for this wave in the same time that one, two, three cycles pass my finger for this wave. So wave A has the greater frequency. The number of cycles to pass a given point, I'll just put my finger there, or I can put my finger there, it doesn't matter, in one second. Now, amplitude. The distance from the equilibrium point to the maximum displacement. For, for graph A, for wave A, the amplitude is only from here to there. That's the amplitude for wave A. Right there. Right there. But what about wave B? Wave B has a much greater 
amplitude from equilibrium all the way up to the crest, the amplitude of wave B is much greater. Now, amplitude is independent of the other one, two, three properties. I could have easily made this amplitude much smaller and the other three would not be affected. Amplitude is independent. Now, what about period? The amount of time for one cycle. Again, assuming that these two waves are traveling at the same speed. And I could put the times down here. Now, it, it doesn't really matter. I can make up any times I want. This is my graph, and I can do it any way I want. You wouldn't do this on a, just put numbers in on a, on a Regents exam. But I, I'm making up this graph, so I can do anything I want here. Um, let's say that this is a half, and this is one. One and a half seconds, two seconds, two and a half seconds, three seconds. All right, so wave A takes one second to complete one cycle. Crest trough is one cycle. So wave A takes one second. Wave B, to complete one cycle, that's crest trough, takes three seconds. Wave B has a much greater period. All right? Now, let's just take a look at some of these relationships. For wavelength, B is greater. Keep in mind the wavelength and frequency are inversely related. That means whatever is true for wavelength, the opposite will be true for frequency. If B has the greater wavelength, then A will have the greater frequency. Now, amplitude is independent. So I'm going to erase amplitude, because amplitude is not going to be in the discussion of inverse and direct relationships. Frequency and period are also inversely related. If A has the greater frequency, then B must have the greater period. Frequency and period are inversely related. Note also that wavelength and period are directly related. If B has the greater wavelength, B must also have the greater period. Let's just quickly look at this in terms of the equations on your reference tables. Right, on your reference tables, on the page that says waves and optics, there are two equations that apply to our discussion right now. The equation for the speed of a wave and the equation for the relationship between frequency and period. The first two equations on the Waves and Optics page. Go to the Waves and Optics page and take a look while I copy these equations down. On the Waves and Optics page, the first equation, V equals F lambda. So that's velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Now if you solve, for example, for frequency, frequency equals Velocity divided by wavelength. You can see that the relationship between frequency and wavelength is inverse. Now, the second equation, period, remember capital T is period, is 1 over frequency. So again, you can easily see that the relationship between period and frequency is inverse. Now, if we combine these two equations, we can see the relationship between wavelength and period. And again, that's keeping in mind that we're talking about the same speed. In this case, we can simply talk about the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. 
These equations also, however, hold for sound waves. Now, let's substitute, let's substitute, uh, let's switch these two, all right? So we, you're allowed to switch inverses. I can put the F up here and the T down there. So F equals 1 over period, all right? And now, I'm going to substitute 1 over period for F here. Because I want to see the relationship between period and wavelength, so I want to get them in the same equation together. So V equals 1 over period times wavelength, right? And that would be, that would be V equals wavelength over period, all right? And again, you're allowed to switch these two mathematically. You are allowed to do that. So if we switch those two, right, we see that period equals wavelength over V. So again, the relationship between period and wavelength is direct. They're both on the top together. You can put this over one and see they are both on the top together. So, we've talked about a lot of the qualitative properties of waves. We've talked about wavelength, amplitude, frequency, and period. There are no equations for amplitude, so you don't have to worry about plugging in amplitudes, but there are two equations on your reference tables that show the relationships between frequency, wavelength, and period. And we can combine these equations in various ways to see the relationship between wavelength and frequency, the relationship between frequency and period, and the relationship between wavelength and period. And again, this is just a qualitative treatment with a little bit of an introduction to the quantitative aspects. In the next section, section three, we will be very, very specific about using numbers to show the relationships between wavelength, frequency, and period, and also to simply read the amplitude accurately off of a graph.